<laughs> Got a little closer, buddy. There you go. It's like, hey, nothing's happening. That's because you moved. <laughs> you moved and then moved back. <laughs> this is kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, I love how he hasn't figured it out yet. Uh, it's funny. Oh, so now it's a game? I love how something as simple as a fan can just be mm, endless entertainment with a child because he's trying to figure out everything. You haven't wanted me to forget this, but I didn't know. Um, if you guys are under a really heavy, heavy demon attack, um, that might be because, uh, not necessarily because you've done anything wrong, um, it's because the devil might know that you, if, if, if the message or whatever you're supposed to do, he's really trying to stop you, I've noticed. And if you do succeed, and, you're, and if he fails and you succeed, a lot of times someone's like, wow, that message or wow, that thing you did, it really, it really changed my life, it really turned me around, thank you. So keep that in mind, guys. It's like... It's like I, I think every I think every time I say something like this, he attacks me a little bit more. Like how how dare you give away one of my secrets? You know, like um, so heavy demon attack is a sign that you might you might be onto something. Like like you never know. Like don't give up because like someone's life could change if you succeed and the devil fails. So never give up, guys. Never assume that you're just failing right off the bat. Keep pushing on. Keep doing things for Jesus. Take care. Hey, this is Tom L. with the Tom L. Christian Channel in the windiest upstairs there ever is with a, with a needy cat, apparently. And uh, I just turned on a fan, and it's it's really hot up here unless I turn up the fans. So, um, <laughs> I hope that you can hear me okay. Uh, thanks, Mom. That was the best, possibly the best comment ever with so many mistakes in it. <laughs> I really had to try hard to, to be like, oh, what do you mean by this? <laughs> Thanks, Mom. You're the best. Um, wow. Good heart. Um, bad typing. Um, Tom L. here with the Tom L. Christian Channel. And tonight's topic is your actions and how they affect other people. Uh, as Christians, we really are called to a higher standard. Um, we're supposed to behave better. And it kind of comes with the territory. Jesus helps us for sure. But we need to try, guys. You can't just be like, oh, you know what? I'm saved, so... You know, I'm good to go. I don't, I don't have to try anymore. In fact, that's the opposite. You really do have to try. You really, um, <laughs> you have to be sorry. And part of that, I mean, if you guys, I, 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 I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for myself. I know that before I was able to do half the things I was able to do, like with Jesus, like I had to go through a lot of suffering first. I had to go through a lot of demon attacks first. I had to go through a lot of, I had to go through, I had to change a lot first before I was there. Cause I kept on asking him and I kept on getting attacked. And only afterwards do I understand why. I mean, in the process, I didn't. And I'm sure if I had someone to help me, like I'm, I'm helping other people. Uh, hopefully, anyway, uh, we'll see. Uh, let me know if I'm not. But um, if I had the help, like it probably would have been different. But he, uh, you know, and but I still, he still helped me all, all on my own. This just proves how real it is. It's like without, without practically any intervention from from anyone else, really, except maybe I talked to my mom once in a while. And my dad didn't help at all, actually. <laughs> but never mind that. Um, yeah, um, it just proves it was real. Like he changed me, just him, mostly at first, and then and then I got direction through Paul Begley and other people. Um, so you know, like be honest with yourself. You got to value yourself thoroughly. I mean, you really do. You have to value yourself thoroughly because. If you're going to change and you're and, and you're going and you're going to like be an example for other Christians or or baby Christians, big big time, you guys need some of you guys need to improve on that. Some of you guys are doing a good job. Like I've noticed, especially especially lately. Sorry for bumping the camera. Um, yeah, I mean I mean some of you guys get it, and I see that, and God bless you. Like you guys are so inspirational to me, and and I don't know this is, for some things. Um, I, I still, I'm still not there. I don't think, I don't think any of us ever are until the day that we're called up. I mean, seriously, and I think that's it. Like, we're, we're never going to be perfect. And if you think you are, if you think, oh, you know what? I'm good where I'm at. Uh, I'd rethink it. I seriously would rethink it, guys. Like, when I'm at work, I work with, I, I, I work right next to, um, a guy, I work, like, right across from a guy that's, like, a really devout, like, I don't know what denomination he is, but... He's definitely a Christian. And he's definitely a good Christian too. But I know, but it, um, 
I haven't quite figured him out yet, but he's a good man, and he's very polite and very honest, but it's like you try to crack a joke to him, he's just like, <laughs> he's getting better, I think I'm warming him up a little bit, I think I'm mellowing him out a little bit, but, you know, at first when I'm like, ha ah, ha he's like, <laughs> so, uh, now, now, he, now he's a little better. Like I, I think I'm buttering up to him a little bit. Like I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm guessing he's one of those like strict law type Christians, which is fine. I, I God bless you guys. But you guys don't have to be like <laughs> every time I say something that might be funny to other Christians. That yes, are they following the Bible? Yes. Are are, are they being loving? Probably a little bit more than you know. <laughs> Probably a little bit more than just giving you a cold stare because once again, it's all about character and attitude. It's like you can tell by the way he acts. He's like a very, a very upkept individual, and um, and my boss is just awesome. It's kind of funny because he's also obviously I, I think he's primarily Catholic, but he's just like really down to earth. It's really funny because I work with two wonderful Christians, and and he, and with my boss, he's just like sure anything goes. You're awesome, you know, like and gives you like infinite chances, and he's just awesome, which is which is just the best. Having a boss like that is just great. Truly. A blessing from God. And then, and then there's the other the other type of Christian. So it's like, hmm, I'm kind of exposed to both to both extremes and I didn't even think about it until this point, which is kind of funny. Um so I, I get my fill. I get my fill. It's like no matter where I go, there's there's Christ everywhere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for making it a little easier than some of these people that are that is that is seriously like you know, if you're like, oh man, I feel so bad for some of you Christians that might be over in like some like really like 95% Muslim country and you just got to hide and you just got to like try to hide and duck and be an underground church. God bless you guys. You guys are, now, you guys are true believers. If you want to go through all that, God bless you. I mean, hey, over here in America, I mean, we're, we're so well blessed and we're so safe that we, we, we really do, unfortunately, take God for granted and, and it shows and it shows in the way in our attitude and the way we aren't grateful for things the way the way we just be like you know what I deserve another steak dinner it's like come on guys I mean and those guys over there they're 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 bending over backwards to be good and do good deeds and stuff like that they're they're wonderful and there are some wonderful Christians here too I, I think I think we can start to make a difference and I and I know we can make a difference if if we have a good attitude about it if we have if if we through example, which you know just makes sense, and I'm sure you heard that all before, but if you actually done it consistently, I mean, it, it, it's one thing to to think that you are, but are you? Um, you know, a lot of times your friends throw you for a loop. Like, come on, we all know what you're like. And it's like, ooh, really? Hmm. You know what I mean? Um, hopefully, unless they're thinking of the old you, unless you're a recent recently converted, and and that's one thing that even my family now like they just don't believe that I could change like they still hold me to the old me's values like the old me used to swear a lot the old me used to get angry a lot the old me used to oh whatever pick something pick some bad qualities and they'd still hold me to that and they'd still expect that from me and it's just like blows them away that I'm not that way anymore and it's just like are you my brother really where what'd you really do with them you're his clone or something <laughs> it's really funny it's like yeah born again just proves so, um, and you can, and you really, and that shock value is actually helpful because then you're like, hey, you know what? This is real. That's one way you can get people to seriously think about it. It's like, something's different about this. Something's different about this so-called Christianity thing. It's like, and some of them think they already are Christians and maybe, but they aren't acting like it yet. And they probably haven't personally asked Jesus to save them in their heart yet. Now, I like I like to call them pre-Christians. I like that. I forgot who said that. But pre-Christians are like, they're ready to become Christians. And they thought they were Christians. And they already know it. They've already been around Christians. And so all they have to do is accept Jesus in their heart fully. Like, you know, instead of thinking, ah, good enough Sundays. Yep, that's fine with me. And some of them are even worse than that. It's like, Easter and Christmas. And that's good enough for me. Like, you, you really have to think about it. You know, like, accept Jesus in your heart. Seriously. It, it's the re it's the rest of eternity for you, and if if I, if me and a lot of other people are correct, you don't have much longer to think about it, guys. And we're and and if and if me and a bunch of other people are also correct, we won't be around to tell you how to get there. You're gonna have to figure it out based off whatever videos or whatever books we leave behind. And who knows if they're gonna make that available to you guys? You guys gotta seriously think about this. I mean, seriously now, get right with God. You might be running out of time. I mean, it's not the time. It's not the time to be like, you know what, another soapbox, or you know what, hmm, another Netflix, no, another Redbox DVD. And it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, I mean, does that really make sense, guys? I mean, think about it. It's like, okay, 
Um, Jesus is coming back soon. You know what? Time for another movie. I can worry about that later, really. I mean, I'm just saying, like, something to think about. And, and it's got a lot to do with your attitude. Like, okay, um, if you start to change and you start to take the Bible seriously and you start to pray and you start to worship and they notice good and positive changes out of you, they might start doing the same thing. Like some of them that may have fallen away, some of them that haven't accepted him yet, the pre-Christians, I'd call them. And uh, I, I, I think I said it too fast. Pre-Christians. Meaning like they're ready to come. They're ready to come to God. They just need that final nudge, they, that final little push. But not the... You know, like, unless you repent, oh, you'll go to hell. They'll be like, yeah, whatever. It's like, no, they need a positive example, not a frightful example. Some people do get saved by fear, absolutely. It says that, it says that, Jesus said that. But, um, most, but a lot of people, you know, they, they've been, they've been desensitized to fear, so they're like, yeah, whatever. Heard it all before. And, and only through example can you change their mind. Like, you know what, this is real. I really need to think about this. It's something to think about. Because you can you can plant that seed, you know, by doing good deeds, like with that, like I mentioned, like that one guy remembered me by this cross, and sorry, I flipped it. I know there's some so really crazy people out there. They're like, oh, he flipped his cross upside down for like a half a second, and they're gonna freeze frame it on that half a second of the cross upside down, and like, see, he's a Satanist. I'm like, come on. I, I mean, first of all, it's dishonesty. Join the liberals, please. And and second of all. Like, are you really serving God if you're if you're if you're spending all your time instead of actually listening to the messages I'm saying? You're you're looking for my mistakes so you can so you can post another video and remain popular. I mean, that's what it really is. Be honest with yourself. That is what it really is. I mean, you you've made it a mission. It, it's a, it's consumed you. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Now, one thing I've noticed is that. Um, if if someone is um, not not up to par, like uh, a smell test that I've noticed that might help you guys out a little bit, is if someone is if a Christian is preaching for popularity, uh, that's not a good thing. In other words, like if, if his message isn't popular, um, he'll like change it, um, and and that's and that's a problem because um, okay, so. Uh, you, you're going to have to believe that I'm that 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 Jesus is talking through me in order to understand this. So Jesus comes to me. Jesus tells me what I'm supposed to talk about. Give, gives me some hints at what at, at you know like some some cliff notes. Like hey, talk about this 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 this. Here's some examples. Tom, go at it. I'll help you. Um, if 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 God is not with that person when they're talking. Um, or hasn't guided them, and they're really just doing it on their own, and that that that's an indication that not necessarily, but it is an indication because you know you can override you can override God's will anytime. You know, like he'll he'll let you he'll let you make mistakes so you can learn from them and then come back to him. Absolutely, I mean that that that's just one way Christians learn is is he'll let us screw up so that way we'll understand what we did wrong and not not, not doing it again. Um, so. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes you gotta let them learn, and I think I think God's the same way. You know, he's, he's parenting us. He lets us know, you know, when we make mistakes. Sometimes, sometimes the only way some of us stubborn, thick-shelled Christians, the only way we learn, is by is by making mistakes and learning the hard way, and then and then um, he'll, and then you know. So, um, okay, let's say someone, let's say one of the teachers or one of, or one of or one of the people it doesn't have to be a teacher. It can be any kind of Christian. Let's say they have screwed up really bad. And they come back to you and they ask you for forgiveness. I've noticed something. A lot of people are like, nope, we're done with you. You're not a real Christian. Really? Hmm. So, let me think about that for a minute. Like, you yourself uh, screw up plenty and you ask God for forgiveness. And yet, and yet, um, when you, and yet, and yet, when you see someone else, like, screw up, and, and it's something that you've noticed and it involves you maybe, and they come and ask you to forgive them, and you don't because you're like, oh, you know what? I'm writing you off. I'm done with you. Well, really? Hmm. Why should God make an exception to you then? Why God might say, you know what? I'm done with you. I'm writing you off too because that's what you did to someone else. You did not forgive them. You have to forgive others if you want to be forgiven. I mean, I read that off last time. I mean, it's all over. Jesus said that a lot, actually. Um. So, I mean, come on, guys. Some of this just makes sense. And I hope, and I hope that I, you know, maybe I've made uh, some people think twice about it. I'm guessing that's that's the primary purpose of this. But whatever it's whatever Jesus wants me to talk about, honestly, I'm not gonna question what what comes out of it. I mean, if, if people hate me because it comes out of it, um, maybe it's a test from God. I don't know. Maybe I screwed up the message. I'm sorry if I did that. I mean, I'm I'm speaking from the heart, and I'm speaking 
with that Jesus speaks through me. Like I have a couple of bananas of my own. I'm not. You see, I'm the type of person that doesn't like to do this because I. And that's that's the odd thing is like I don't like to do this. Maybe that's why he's having me do this because I'm not. I, I'm less. I'm less likely to add my own stuff because I don't even want to do this to begin with. I mean, now that now that I'm getting some acceptance, I guess. I mean, I'm a little bit more comfortable, and and, and because my prayer is strengthening, and because um, you know, I'm help. I, mean, I, I actually feel like I'm helping people. That helps, but you know, I'm I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm still pretty hesitant to come on here and do these, and I edit the heck out of them because I'm a little insecure about it because I didn't want to do this to begin with. But I'm a good servant of the Lord, and I'm doing these. So understand that this isn't a popularity stunt on my on my end by any means. I'm honestly trying to help people because Jesus wanted me to help people, and I thought and and, and He knew that I would do it. Um, and God bless Bob Barper for helping me get here because I didn't even think about doing it this way. I was struggling. It's amazing how Bob and Barber helped me. Like when when we were at when we met in person for real life, and and um, I was still trying to find my purpose in life. I was just doing random things. It's like what do Christians do? Quick, do something. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want Jesus to say I didn't do any good things for him. So <laughs> I'm like, uh, what do they do? Uh, give to the poor. Okay, checkbox there. Uh, behave really well. Uh, I got to work on that. <laughs> no swearing. Okay. That's just like, hmm, what do I do? What do I do? You know, I was just trying to like scramble. It's like, well, what do most Christians do? And I'm sure, most, I'm sure a lot of baby Christians uh, are, are, are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing now. Well, guys, you know, God, yeah, sometimes you got to pay attention to what other people say. Sometimes God tells you directly. It all depends. Like God works in many ways, you know, to limit them just one. But I, w I would say, um, I would say this to you. It's like, try not to worry about it and trust God because it, you know, it may not be the, what, what you want to do. And maybe that's why you're qualified to do it because you won't screw it up because you're not gonna, you're not gonna be like, I'm great at this. And you're like, no, please don't do this. And it's like, you know, he, he might be like, you're like, well, I'm going to use you anyway because it's perfect because your attitude doesn't suck, which is, which is kind of how um, the King David came about. It's like, um, I believe it was Samuel. Yes, it was Samuel. He went over like, was it seven or eight brothers, and 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 Sam wanted to pick the one. He's like, nope, nope. I know what's in their heart. And you're judging by human standards, and he picked he picked King and he picked David because David was David had the heart of God. In other words, he had the right heart. So. You know, just because you don't think you're qualified to do it, and God sees your true qualifications, even if you're not, even if you don't yet. And sometimes only by trial and error do you find out. Sometimes he might give you hints in prayer. I'm not sure. It seems to work both ways. I'm sure it depends on the person. But you'll get there. You'll get there. Have faith in God, and, and he'll guide you because he loves you. And he's doing it at a pace that, that you can handle. So some people can handle a faster pace. Some people Some people handle a slower pace. Whatever I mean, come to other Christians, real Christians. That, for example, like here's a hint: like if they tell you that you have to go to church and 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 pay your tithe and and uh, do things exactly the way the church says, and you have to join and you have to go through hoops and and skips and stuff like that, and they don't. And and when you say, well, what about my relationship with them? And they're like, huh? Well, that's a clue that maybe they're not there yet. Um, that's just that's just a guess because that was me. <laughs> that was me totally. So. Uh, hopefully that didn't offend anyone. Um, I'm sure I'll be heavily, heavily editing this. Um, well, one thing I noticed that uh, that I do is I uh, when whenever like times are good, like I've done something really good for the Lord and I know it, and everything's happy and great, which is good. It's awesome, and I'm like, oh yes, I've done something really good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving me the chance to do that. I mean, I, I'm just I'm just really grateful that you gave me a chance to do that for you. Um, then the next, the very next thing is I'll, I'll go and and uh, I'll get really comfortable with myself and then and then I'll really screw up like you know you're really happy and all of a sudden it's like someone says something to you and you know that's the devil the devil used them they got you ang they got the, they got angry at you for something you were you were just like blissfully ignorant you weren't paying attention and like let's say I got my wife mad or something just because my attitude she didn't like it because I was like spacing out or something because I was happy whatever and then and then she mistook something i did and then and then i'll throw me so far off and then i'll just get in a fight with her because it's just like i wasn't expecting it my guard wasn't up i mean the the devil like he he thrives at doing stuff like that so you got to be careful um it, it, he will 
uh, kill, steal, and destroy any chance he can. So don't give him the chance. Like, always keep your guard up. Be like, yes, this was good. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving me a chance. Thank you. Thank you. But, and it's like, but I won't screw up. It's like, oh, you know, I gotta, I gotta keep my guard up. Always keep your guard up. Always keep your armor of faith up. Um, that's wonderful. Like, the, ar the armor of God, that's so accurate. <laughs> Because you can, you can go, sometimes you can go without your armory, sometimes you can go naked if you like, if, if you like, if you let yourself, it's so easy to do, it's like, God is so understanding, <laughs> he really is, like, and sometimes he lets us, he, he lets us uh, make mistakes because that way, at, at the end of it, we'll come out stronger because we're like, oh, well, I won't make that mistake again, um, so just don't, just because you screw up, don't, don't, don't assume that uh, he's given up on you and and that you and that it's all over for you um, um you know i mean don't give up on god don't deny him obviously um don't change don't don't change back to the way you the person you are because I'm, I'm sure a lot of baby christians like they've been misled and and someone's like <laughs> like for example a baby christian comes to like a chat site and it's like oh i've done something really bad and it's like what do i do and then and then some some real winner of a Christian comes along, like, they've completely forgotten what it's like to be a baby Christian, or maybe they're just dense, and they're like, oh, yeah, you've done a terrible thing, go away. It's like, we don't, we don't want someone like you around. It's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're a great example. Thanks, buddy. I mean, come on. I mean, that's so obvious. It's like, uh, I mean, not only does that strike against you, but really, yeah, some, some, some uh, salvation you got there, bud. I mean, come on. I mean, be be merciful, be kind to each other. I said that in the. It's amazing how that one passage I said last time still covers this topic. I mean, be merciful, be kind to them. Like these baby Christians, they really are sensitive. Like you can really push them over the edge if you're not careful, guys. I mean, I mean, take it seriously. Take what I'm take take what I'm saying seriously. It's coming from the Holy Spirit. It's not coming from me. Like he pops the ideas in my head, sure, sometimes on the fly. Like if I've forgotten something. Oh yeah, I had this too. But it's coming from him and sometimes really awesomely i get confirmations like someone else says the same thing and i don't even find out two days later that's awesome but um i'm not counting on that i'm counting on my relationship with god and sometimes i know i've screwed up because it doesn't feel right after I made the video like the first time i made like the first time i made that poor bit poor video i made video for helping the poor and i finally got around to doing it tonight conjuring it up and uh, piecing it together with the original, with the original ending, uh, uh, the original file that I had. So, um, but that was fun, and I f I'm glad I finally got that message out there. Might not have been the most powerful message just because I had to redo it. So it would have been more powerful had I had I like um, kept it, had I had I like uh, done it right the first time, all on the same night. So it's all fresh in my mind, and I haven't been because that's the thing. And, and sometimes you'll notice that my messages aren't that strong. It's it, it's sometimes keep that in mind. That's because I've done them over like five times because I forgot to turn off the plane mode. I'm gonna check that right now, actually. And uh, <laughs> uh, you just gotta be careful. Um, make sure make sure that you're doing the right thing. Make sure. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit this. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Eh, you know what? I won't this time. Just so you guys know what I'm going through. Um, uh, yeah, like I'll lose my train of thought. Uh, let me focus. So, in closing, like be careful. With, be careful how you treat other people. Even if it's, even if you know, a lot of times you're not thinking about it, but you're setting a bad example. Um, like, like for instance, like just a joke you say between friends, like you make fun of Obama or whatever, and it's like, and and, uh, and um, that's that may be funny in your head, but um, someone else might, someone else might, you know, you're not setting a good example because you're telling them that's okay to make inappropriate jokes or whatever. Um, if you got, if you got potty humor or other types of humor that aren't exactly Christian proved, I uh, mean, I would seriously ask God to, to change your heart. And change, change doesn't have to be immediate. Um, I've noticed like it can be gradual once again, depending on the person, like, um, each, each, per, he'll change each person according to what they can handle. Not, not, um, so like all you Christians out there that think that someone's not changing fast enough and they're making too many mistakes and you might give them right, right off and give up on them. All these, all these baby Christians, like, no, take time with them because it, it'll pay off in the end because Jesus will welcome you to heaven and be like, well done, my good and faithful servant, because you didn't give up on them. That's so I haven't given up on you. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I mean, just think about it seriously. Like a lot of this stuff should make sense to you guys. And a lot of you guys are agreeing with me, hopefully, unless he's like, no, you said it all wrong. Shame on you, Tom. 
Shame on you and your giant shiny cross, you ADD child, you. Um, my mom's probably laughing at that one right now. Hey, you know what? I ordered this I ordered this cross online and I didn't realize it was this big with that big of a chain, but I kind of like it, so that's okay, right? I mean, it's kind of funny. <laughs> no idea it was that big, but it, it stands out, so hey, you know what? I'm making a... I'm making a I'm making an impression. Like that's why I gotta be careful because because when you put on when you put on this cross, you're you're saying to God, I I am not ashamed to be your follower. I am not ashamed to admit that I follow you. There's nothing shameful about following you, Jesus. And so uh, I I am going to so that way when I do good deeds, hopefully I'm doing good deeds. When I do good deeds, then then other people will see this cross like that one homeless guy. And then, and then, uh, and then they will remember it, and they will remember that it wasn't just me; it was what I stand for. It's Christianity for you, Jesus. I, I, I made a good example of you, Jesus, so they can look into you, so it can change their hearts. So I planted a seed of good in them. I planted that seed, so then you can start your works in them, Lord. Sometimes through prayer, sometimes through action, but it's there, and it's there because He called us to do these things, and we need to do these things. And for those of you who are like, oh, he's worshiping this cross. I'm not worshiping this cross. Am I worshiping this cross or am I holding up saying, hey, look at me, I'm a Christian. Okay, that's different. That's very different. I'm not like, this cross is the source of my power. Without it, I am powerless. No. Oh, shiny refraction in the, in the camera lens. Awesome. But um, no, I'm not saying that. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying that this is my way of, of respecting God, saying I am not afraid to show off the fact that I'm a Christian and I know a lot of Christians are a little nervous at doing that. I understand that because society, this is intentional by the devil. Society is trying to make us feel like we should just be quiet about our faith and go away. Like, you know, you're not accepted and we're going to make you out to be a hateful person. And, that's, a, and that's, that's totally a trap from the devil. Like, we need to stand out. We need to stand out because at the end of the day, a lot of people are waking up to this. Like, okay... Who who are you gonna believe? The guy who was super nice to you and went out of his way to always be uh, always be good and always set a good example? Or are you gonna believe someone who's barking their head off and saying all these things faster than you can take them in, uh, like the media? <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, I'm sure some of the kids might not believe you, but you know, who knows? Like, leave that up to God. All you can do is your part. And uh, I, I'd like to end, I'd like to end it there because I think that I, I I think I'm comfortable leaving it at this point in the video. So you guys take care. And I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll have another Sam, a cute little Sam video to throw in there. Alright, see you guys. Bye. Say bye. Say bye bye. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the stop button.